Hello everyone and welcome to Diamond Painting Reviews by Janae. Tonight's video is the first installment of the collaboration between myself and Rob, aka Diamond Painting Dog Dad. But before we get started, a couple of things I wanted to bring up. First of all, the painting that we're working on together is called House on the Hill and this comes from the Diamond Art Club. This is a 50 by 33 full round drill and it has 29 colors to it. This is more of a fall painting, but you know, um, I've had this for a while and I thought when Rob brought it up, I thought, yeah, that's a good idea because this painting's been sitting around a bit and I really should get it done. <laughs> um, secondly, Rob, if you're watching, as you can see, I only have a small portion here done. Um, so you got a huge head start on me. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, um, I, I hope to catch up to you soon. Um, and uh, what can I say about Rob? He is such a wonderful, wonderful person. Um, I enjoy watching his videos. He's very informative. I'd love to uh, see his dogs, see how they're doing, but also he's doing some different things too with, um, I believe they're called, and I, please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, black frogs? They're, they're very dangerous. Rob, what are you thinking? <laughs> When you were talking about this, I'm like, holy smokes, what are you, what are you going to do with those? But the, um, and I know I'm not saying this correctly, but the aquariums that you've put together for these frogs are amazing. And the knowledge that you have is inspirational. So I look forward to watching those videos about your frogs. Um, also in the collaboration, we will uh, start discussing things that are really important to the both of us, and that is um, animals. Um, as most of you that have been following me know, I'm a small dog breeder, and um, I've always had a passion for dogs, but my love and huge passion has always been horses. So I'll be bringing that up a little bit as we go with the collaboration, but um, that is my passion. And tonight's video, what I'd like to do is some tag questions. This way, it will give you more information, especially those that have just subscribed to the channel. And thank you, um, and a huge welcome to all of you that have. Um, but this will give you uh, more insight about me, and um, I hope that you enjoy the video. Also, most of you that have been following me for some time, you know that I really don't discuss my personal life but uh, I think that it's, you know, I need to start getting out of my shell and um, start sharing with you a little bit about myself. So that's what this video is going to be about tonight. I hope you enjoy it. And let's get to that first tag question. So the first question, where did you grow up? Get my pen here. Um, I grew up in many places, but I was born in Tacoma, Washington, and uh, when I was little, so through grade school, I lived in Southern California, and then um, in my teen years, we moved back up to Washington State and lived in a small town called Shelton, Washington. Um, it's no longer small, it's now a city, it's huge. In fact, the last time I went to Shelton, I didn't even recognize it. It was just amazing how big it got. Um, then after uh, graduating from high school, I um, moved to Boise, Idaho and lived there for about three years. Then moved back to Washington State. I, yeah, um, Boise was nice. Nothing against Boise, but it just, I, I missed home. I missed the trees, I missed the ocean. So we moved back and we lived in the um, Auburn area for a few years and then eventually moved out to um, a little town. I mean, and I'm talking little town. I think there was about maybe 120 people that lived 
in this area, but the town was actually called, don't laugh, Home. You heard me right. Home. H-O-M-E. That was the name of the town. And we lived on acreage out there. I had horses and my dogs and uh, really liked it. Um, but unfortunately, things just didn't work out. So I eventually moved back to Tacoma and lived there for about two years. And then got the opportunity to work in one of the hospitals in Toronto. And so I moved to Toronto, Ontario, Canada. I lived there for a little over eight years. And then I now live in Winnipeg. Um, and Winnipeg is in the province of, oops, Manitoba. It's above the Dakotas and Montana. So that is where I currently live. Um, I love Winnipeg. It is beautiful here. Um, I love the summers, the springs, the summers and the falls. I could live without the winters though. The older I get, the harder it is on my arthritis. <laughs> So, but I have to say, I do love this area. It's just, it's beautiful. So let's get into our second tag question. What state country do you currently live in? Well, I, as I said, live in Winnipeg, Manitoba. And um, really love it here. Really do. Okay. Number three, how tall are you? Hmm, well, the older I get, the shorter I become. I'm shrinking. <laughs> I am about five foot six inches. And in our family, that's short. Most of my cousins and my siblings are um, very close to six foot, if not over six feet tall so my youngest son is 6'6 six, six, and my oldest I believe is almost six foot so I'm considered short um, for my family so let's go to question four dogs or cats <laughs> um, well that's a no-brainer. Um, I'm a big dog person. I've always had a huge passion for Shetland Sheepdogs. And that's what I currently breed. Um, so cats are nice. Nothing, you know, nothing towards, you know, cats. Uh, but I love dogs. And it's really super special when you come home from work and your dogs are um, waiting at the door. And as soon as you open up the door, their tails are wagging. They're so excited to see you. They're jumping around. Um, sometimes it can be a little bit annoying when you're trying to come in the house and they're jumping all over you. But, um, you know, it's really nice when you come home and you've had a long day, especially if you had a really long, bad day at work, to come home to something like that. So, um, yeah, so it's dogs. Uh, I find that cats, you know, they, they kind of have that, oh, it's you attitude or, okay, whatever. <laughs> but I have to say, um, I have had cats in the past and they are, they are quite the interesting character. You know, you can come across a cat that is uh, either very loving and wants to be around you, or you can have a cat that's like, looks at you like, I dare you to touch me. <laughs> So um, dogs can somewhat be that way too, but I think dogs are a little bit more personable. I, I don't know. I could be wrong. Anyway, let's go to question five. Funniest moment throughout high school. Oh boy. Um, geez. Now, personally, I don't like to have to remember high school. 
Um, but that's just me. You know, I don't want to have to remember it. But uh, funniest thing that happened in high school. Um, oh, boy. I'm just trying to remember. Uh, I think I might have to skip that question and, and think about it a little bit longer. Um, yeah, because uh, there's... You know, when you th when you think about a question, sometimes your brain just goes so fast trying to figure out, okay, what what was anyway. <laughs> okay, so let's go to question six. What year were you born? Really? <laughs> if I give you my year, you guys are going to know how old I am. <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, I don't mind. I was born in 1966. So yeah, that would make me 53. I'll be 54 this year. And sometimes I wake up and my body feels like it's 80. <laughs> anyway, now let's go with our next question. Are you in or have you gone to college? I have gone to college. Um, I have gone to um, cosmetology school when I was first out of high school and spent two years there and then um, was a uh, hairstylist for 14 years before I had to give that up because of my hands. And then um, when I moved to Canada, I decided I wanted to go for radiology and you know it's kind of scary when you're in another country and you're just not really sure about how you're going to do things and you know being a single parent um, I didn't think I could afford to go to university or college um, until I started looking into it and realized wow what a difference in price so I, I'm the type of person that um, I can be very determined when I want to be. And so when I realized that the price uh, for me to go to um, university out there was not even a quarter of what it would have cost me to go um, in my home state, I jumped on it and I took um, courses for medical terminology and um, secretarial courses as well as radiology courses. So uh, I did not complete the program um, because of many things. One, um, when you are taking this course, you had acknowledged the fact that you could be placed anywhere in the province to do your residency. And because I was a single parent with two small children, that's why I decided to drop the radiology course and went into medical administration. And so still had to take that medical terminology though. And I'll tell you what, that was not an easy course. I had two years of that. Woo. And it Whoever came up with those terms, I'm telling you, wow. But, you know, it is interesting, I can say that. Um, when I moved to Manitoba, I went back to school and took on um, business administration and bookkeeping. Um, the reason why I did that is because I did not go back into the medical field. And currently, I am a inventory controller for a um, agricultural and recreational company. So I wanted to get a diploma in um, business administration. So that is that. So let's get into that next question. What is your favorite drink? Okay, now I could take this a couple of ways. 
Um, now, I don't drink soda. I haven't drank soda in years. And um, But if we were to go back in time, I would say my favorite soda was um, Cherry Coke or Dr. Pepper, one of the two. Those were my two favorites. Um, nowadays is uh, coffee and I really like um, the pink lemonade crystal light in my water. So those are the two things that I drink the most. Now, if you're talking about alcoholic beverages, oh, can't can't live without my raspberry or strawberry margaritas. Mm. But I'm not a very heavy drinker, so usually I don't drink um, unless we're at a party or you know on holidays. Other than that, I don't I don't drink a lot. Okay, so let's get into that next question. So that is question nine, tea or coffee? I prefer coffee, but I do like orange pico tea. And usually you can tell when I'm not feeling good because that is my go-to drink is the um, orange pico tea. So let's go to the next question. What sport do you play or have played? Um, well, I don't play any sports now. Um, I have really bad knees. I mean, I'm, I'm old. <laughs> um, but in high school, I played a lot of uh, baseball. Um, and I was also on the swim team. So those were my two sports. Other than horses... Those were the only sports that I got into. Okay, so let's go to the next question. What is your favorite movie? My all-time favorite movie is called No Way Out with Kevin Costner, Gene Hackman, and what was her name? I can see her face, but I can't remember her name now. Um, it won't. It'll come to me after I finish the video. Believe me. <laughs> Sean Young, there it is. Um, I thought that was one of the best thriller movies I'd seen in years, and I still, to this day, really enjoy watching it. Um, runner up to that would be uh, Dances with Wolves. Um, uh, I also like uh, Field of Dreams. Now, if you haven't figured out who I like to watch, <laughs> but I love Kevin Costner. I think he is a great actor, so I watch a lot of his movies. <laughs> um, but those are my, my favorites. All right. Uh, question 16. Do you speak any other languages and how well? Let's see, um, I can count to about 20 in German and say a few words or a few phrases, I guess you can say. Um, my husband's probably laughing because he's, if he's watching this, he's probably going, oh my God. My husband speaks German and um, yeah, he. I started taking German classes to surprise him but I needed his help in some of the parts of the course and I would be asking him questions and he would be trying to correct me and I'd go to my instructor and say oh well you know my husband said this and she's like uh, that's German that was spoken like in the 1950s and they don't speak that anymore don't listen to him <laughs> I about fell over when she said that. So, uh, yeah. Um, but my German's very, very limited. Um, I can understand some 
bits and pieces of it, but it's it's very limited. Now I can understand bits and pieces of Spanish as well, and I'm really hoping to learn some Spanish this year um, because we like to go to Mexico in the winter time. So it's nice to be able to travel and go into these other countries and be able to speak to the locals in their language instead of fumbling around trying to to explain what you're looking for. So that's my my hope. Um, so sis, if you're watching, I, I got a contact <laughs> for lessons, so I'm hoping to do that um, sometime in the next couple of months. It just depends on how this virus thing goes. So, alright, let's go to question 17. Are you single or taken? I'm taken. Yep, I, I love Mr. Review. He's, he is, um, the love of my life, and unfortunately we met, you know, later in our lives, but, um, um, love him to death, and I've spent, well, we've been together since 2008, and, um, you know, he's, he's just everything to me and, uh, my best friend, everything. So, so question 18, how many siblings do you have? I have, just make sure where my line is there. I have two sisters. I'm the youngest of the three and I have two stepbrothers who basically I consider as brothers. So, we're very, very close. Okay, so let's go to number 19. What is your go-to fast food order? That would be uh, Subway's uh, turkey breast. On whole wheat. I <laughs> uh, love their sandwiches. So that would be my go-to takeout. Let's go to the next question. Question 20. Do you use a PC or a Mac? I'd really like to use a Mac, but can't afford it. So yeah, we're on the PC. <laughs> um, eventually I'm hoping to get a Mac, but uh, yeah, it's not in the cards right now. So oops, of course you two decided to slip out there we go. Okay, so let's go into our next question. Question 21. Your most memorable vacation memory. <laughs> All right. Um, that would be our first trip to Mexico. We um, went there for 10 days and my lovely husband scheduled a um, ATV and zip lining tour. Now again, those of you that have followed me know that I am afraid of heights and zip lining just isn't, you know, my cup of tea. <laughs> but he wanted to do it, so I went ahead and said, okay, I'm, I'll do it with you. I just don't expect me to enjoy it, but yeah. So anyway, um, let me get my next color before I get into this because it is quite funny. I, I need uh, Y and the nuclear sign. Where is it? That's 3371. Okay, let's do the nuclear sign first. But we're going nuclear. All right, so the day that we went to the zip line to an ATV tour, I was really scared. Now, my husband has no idea how paranoid and scared I was. I did not enjoy zip lining in Vegas. Uh, in fact, the zip line in Vegas, how it's set up is you basically 
uh, lift up your legs. They release the um, the break on uh, the line mechanism. You go flying through the old part of um, Fairmont, and they actually there's no braking system, right? So you're flying through there, and all you can see is that platform is coming up to you really, really fast. The handle, I'm not kidding you here, I gotta do this. The handle is like, imagine this as the rope from the rope mechanism that's holding everything up, and then this is attached to your um, belt that you're actually slinged into. This is what you hold on to while you're going down. I shouldn't say going down, flying down uh, that line. And I ended up getting rope burns. I was so scared. And as we were reaching the platform, and as I said, there was no braking system, you basically were just thrown in there. And there was somebody there to help stop you. But there was no, I mean, it was like an abrupt stop. It was like you, it, it was, it felt like I hit a wall. That's what it felt like. Oh my God. I thought I am not doing that again. Anyway, my husband loved it. He thought it was great. You know, Mr. Review, he was like, oh yeah, that was perfect. So he decided that when we went to Mexico, we were going to do the zip line tour. Yeah. So I like to play around on ATVs. So I said, fine, if we're going to do that, we're going to do ATVs as well. So when we got to this place, the first, uh, I believe it was three hours, we were on ATVs. And um, I had a great time. My husband, on the other hand, Mr. Review, he wasn't having a good time. <laughs> In fact, he keeps telling me that his ATV that he was riding was broken. It had two speeds. Uh, no speed or um, extremely fast. And, well, okay. I have to give him that. A couple of times he almost went over the cliff. But he eventually gave up <laughs> and uh, got it into a uh, razor with two other people and finished out that tour that way. Whereas I had the greatest time. I would have loved it. When we got back from the ATV tour, it was time for the zip line tour. Oh boy. Um, so we got in line, got all of our gear. So they give you the harness, they give you gloves, uh, they gave you a helmet, and they sat you down like in an assembly type situation with a group of people and they explained um, you know, what to do, how the mechanism works. So they give you this metal thing that had two little handles on it and they showed you that when you moved it back and forth like this, it would actually slow down um, your speed. So you actually had a braking system with this one. And I was relieved when I heard this. I thought, oh, thank God. Um, but the entire time he was talking about this, he kept using the word zip lines, not zip line. So after a few times he, that he said zip lines, I raised my hand like a kid in school and he looked at me and kind of smiled. Sorry about that. My video just stopped. That was 30 minutes. Okay. So we we're talking about zip lines. <laughs> So after the instructor gentleman said a number of times zip lines and I raised my hand, um, I said to him, uh, how many zip lines are we talking about here? And he looked at me and he goes, well, there's 13. I wanted to hit Mr. Review on the side of the head because he did not tell me there were 13 zip lines to go through. I was just like, oh, you got to be kidding me. Oh boy. So I didn't say anything. I just, I think my 
the shock on my face told the story. But uh, I followed and went with the group. I believe there was eight of us. And Mr. Review was the first one. We made sure that Mr. Review was the first one to go down that zip line. It was a short zip line. It wasn't very long. And um, he was waiting for me on the other side. Now, <laughs> I was on the other side going, watching people go down the zip line. And, I, and I'm not kidding you. This is exactly what I said. Oh, hell no, I am not going down that. <laughs> um, yeah, so when the fifth person went down the line, Mr. Review was getting to the point where he realized I wasn't coming down that line. I, I had chickened out. I am not doing it. And believe me, uh, I was like, mm -mm, I don't want to do that. I am scared to death of that. But... I eventually did it. I did go up. I was the seventh person to go down the line. And um, I had my eyes closed the entire way down. Yeah, it was scary. Um, but as they said, you know, when you moved that uh, bar back and forth on the line, it did slow you down. And I felt comfortable after the fourth zip line. Now, each zip line that you did, you had to climb, you know, quite a steep area of the hill or mountains because you were up in the mountains. And we eventually got to this line that was called Speedy Gonzales. And all that doesn't tell you something. <laughs> um, Speedy Gonzales was the longest and highest zip line they had on the tour. And the problem with this particular zip line, they warned us, was the wind gust can cause your body to slant off to the side, which will cause the mechanism that's on the line itself to kind of twist like, um, like you are braking. So it'll slow you down. And sometimes it'll slow you down to the, to the point that you actually stop in the middle of that zip line. Yeah, I was like, mm, I don't think that's going to work out for me. <laughs> um, I did do it. Thank God I got to see what happened though with one of the people that was in our group. She had enough speed as she was going down, but there was a wind gust and it did move her. She um, ended up stopping about a quarter of the way to the landing um, platform. So the uh, gentleman that was on the other side waiting for us, he got his mechanism and put it on the line. He pulled himself over to her, wrapped his legs around her, and then pulled her to the landing platform. And I thought, oh, okay. <laughs> so it was my turn next. And um, I picked up quite a bit of speed. And then all of a sudden, I, I could feel my body kind of turning. So I was going straight. And all of a sudden, I could feel my body going like this. And then it would straighten out. And then it would go like So I ended up stuck <clears throat> as well, about a quarter of the way to the platform. And, um, oops, put the drill in the wrong spot. And the gentleman came out, you know, he, he rescued me. And, uh, it, oh, it was fun. So after Speedy Gonzales, we had one other um, zip line that we had to do. And it was long, but it was not very high up in the air. And the question that they would ask you before you got on that line was, do you want to get wet? And... I looked at him and I said, excuse me? And he goes, do you want to get wet? Because you're going to get awfully close to the river that's down there. And we can pull the line down so that if the, as you're getting close to the water, you'll skim the water. I'm like, no, I don't want to skim the water. Thank you. <laughs> A few people did in our group did do that. But uh, no. Mm -mm. 
So after we were done with the zip lines, then we ended up having to get on mules. And the mules took us back up the hill to where the, um, the main uh, office and everything was. So it, you know, all in all, it was fun. It, I did enjoy it after I got over the fear of being, you know, high up in the air and afraid that that line was going to break. But um, I did enjoy it. Will I do it again? No. Mm -mm. I'll do the ATVs, but not the zip lines. So my husband, I told him, I said, you know what? I said, Mr. Review, if you want to do the zip lines, you and my sister can do that because she's the type of person that loves that stuff. So that was my memorable vacation. So question number 22, what are your mornings, evening routine? Okay, so morning routine is really simple. I get up around 4.30 in the morning. I grab a cu cup of coffee. I start working on one of my projects. Um, yes, you did hear me right, 4.30 in the morning. Um, I work on one of my projects for about an hour. Then at that time, I will feed the dogs. So my dogs usually get fed at 6 o'clock in the morning and 6 o'clock in the evening. And believe me, if it is one minute past that time, they will let you know. <laughs> they are on a time schedule. Um, then after they eat, I let them out. Uh, then I usually start getting ready for work. Um, and then evening time, same thing. I get home from work, usually around quarter to six. Six o'clock, I get them fed and uh, out the door so that they can do their business. And I start supper and um, go from there. So those are my routines. Now, I don't do the 4.30 in the morning on the weekends, though. No. All right, so let's go with our next question. Do you have any bad habits? Oh, heavens yes, I do. This is one of them, coffee. <laughs> um, I should drink more water than coffee. Um, excuse me. Um, oh, the other bad habit I have, and I will eventually kick this habit. Um, unfortunately, I do smoke and it's a habit I wished I'd never started and those of you that are thinking about smoking please don't please do yourself a favor it's not worth it it's not cool it's not um, like it was you know like in the 50s and 60s and 70s it's not so if you can avoid uh, picking up that habit do it it believe me it's not worth it. So those are my bad habits. Um, all right, so let's go to question 24. We have two more questions and then we'll end the video. So question 24, tell us one thing about you that we wouldn't know. Okay. One thing that you wouldn't know, maybe some of you might know, but um, the majority of you wouldn't know this. Um, I'm a very shy person. Um, doing YouTube videos has really uh, helped me come out of my shell. And... Uh, I've had a lot of people tell me, oh, you don't, you don't come across as being shy. Well, when you're behind a camera and you, people don't actually see you, it's easy to pull that off. But it's still not easy because, you know, you're always afraid that you're not going to be accepted or you're going to mess up and people are going to, you know, laugh at you or make fun of you or, like I said, just not like you, not being accepted. And... Um, I've always been that way. I've always felt that way, even as an adult. And it's 
it's a difficult thing to go through. So I have worked really hard um, this last couple of years to try and be a little bit more outgoing as far as, you know, going out and meeting people and, and doing that sort of thing. But I find that here I can be myself and I don't have to be afraid. I mean, yeah, sometimes I'm afraid I'm not going to be accepted. I think we all feel that way. But, you know, it's, it's, it's a way of being able to communicate and get over some of those fears. I hope that makes sense. All right, so we're going to the last question. What is the craziest thing that you've ever done? <laughs> Crazy. Uh, well, there's a lot of things my mother would tell you. Um, craziest thing. Well, I'd say the zip lines are the craziest thing I did, but um, well, Oh, I know something that you guys don't know about me, which would fit into this as well, number 25. What you don't know about me and what is the craziest thing that I've ever done? I don't think you all know this. But I own and ride a Harley. Yes, I am a motorcyclist. <laughs> um, I love my Harley. <laughs> Um, yeah, I have been riding motorcycles for oh, years. Um, I started with a, a Yamaha, um, EZ80, uh, it's a dirt bike. And, um, then, uh, you know, as I was growing up in high school and stuff, I didn't have a motorcycle. Um, I wasn't interested, but when I moved out here to Manitoba, um, with Mr. Review. Mr. Review had a BMW. Um, it's a K100 touring bike and uh, I really enjoyed it. I'm. It reminded me of um, all the time that I spent on the dirt bike. So I thought, you know what, I want to get my motorcycle license and start riding again. So I did. I got my motorcycle license and I bought a um, a um, Sportster Custom. So the Sportster is actually the smaller um, Harley. Uh, a lot of people would say, oh, you know, a Sportster doesn't have a lot of get up and go. It's, you know, it's a it's a girl's bike or it's a woman's bike. Well, you know what? Uh, my Sporty has tons of get up and go. Um, it's a custom, so it has like the custom pipes and... Um, it's kind of embarrassing sometimes because I'll be going down a, a road and there'll be parked cars. And if any of those cars have uh, like an alarm system on it and I go by there and it, I don't even have to have the accelerator on. As soon as my bike goes past it, it'll set off every single car alarm because the tone of the pipes is really, really low. It's loud but it's the vibration and the tone that sets off these alarms. And I'm so embarrassed. It's like you try to get out of there as quick as possible, but you can't. So, um, yeah, I love my bike. Um, but it's a, it's a really nice bike. In fact, what I'll do is I will insert a picture of it here. And then that way you can kind of take a look and see what I'm talking about. So, everyone, I'm going to go ahead and end the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I enjoy doing these videos. They're they're just so much fun to be able to tell you a little bit about myself. Now, if you have any questions, please feel free to, you know, put those down in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Love reading your comments. And as I said before, um, I may not answer them as quickly as I'd like to, but I will get them answered. So by saying that, everyone, I hope that you all stay safe. I know this is a broken record. Stay safe, stay healthy. Also, for those of you that are interested, there is a Facebook group out there called Crafty Things by Janae and Island Girl. 
and if you would like to join the group we would love to have you just so that you know it's open to all crafts not just diamond painting so if you do crocheting or needlepoint or anything like that feel free to join the group we would love to have you so by saying that everyone if you enjoyed the video please let me know by giving me that thumbs up I greatly appreciate it and if you're new to the channel a big howdy and welcome if you like what you see and you like what you heard I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. Also, don't forget to hit the bell that is right next door to that subscribe button. That bell will let you know when I've uploaded my next video. So by saying that everyone, if it's morning for you, have a very pleasant morning. If it's afternoon for you, have an excellent rest of your afternoon. And if it's evening for you, have a very relaxing evening. Again, my name's Janae. Thank you for spending some time with me today. On the review. We'll talk again real soon. Take care everyone.